Hi there, Mike Brady with Generosity Wealth Management, a comprehensive full service financial services firm headquartered right here in Boulder, Colorado. Although right now I am actually at my cabin where I, I'm kind of privileged to, to spend the summer uh, just east of Yellowstone, east of the Grand Tetons, right next to Shoshone National Forest, which is right there. I mean, in today's Zoom world, you would think that this might be a, uh, a picture, a backdrop, but it's actually reality. This right here is, uh, see that little orange thing? That's the water well that I dug, I had dug about a week ago. And see that wood pile? That's a pretty good looking wood pile. And those mountains back there, that's the Absaroka Mountains. Um, just right outside of uh, the Wind River re uh, region in Northwest Wyoming. There's so many things to be optimistic about, so many things to be pessimistic about if you choose. Um, lots of chaos, lots of data, lots of noise. And I think that it's important um, whether you're running a business like I am, whether or not you're worried about it for your own personal life, for your own reaching your financial goals, that you decide what to focus on. Because you could sit here and worry about a hundred of them and do a pretty bad job uh, on a hundred, or you could worry about the one or two or three things that are going to have the most impact on what it is that you want. And I think that it's important to do that. And I do that every summer. What is it that's the most important thing for the next 12 months? And that's where I am right this second. So, uh, this past quarter, another good quarter. I mean, sometimes uh, when I do these videos at the end of a quarter, it's sort of like, well, uh, let's not um, you know, try to overanalyze this thing. Things are going great and let's take it when we can. So far this year in 2021, it has been positive. Um, very low on the um, on the declines, meaning that uh, there have been basically about three or four steps forward and really only one small little step backwards. So um, that's a really good thing um, that, uh, you know, there's been very little volatility, um, you know, with the uh, unmanaged stock market indexes like the Dow and the S&P hitting new highs, then, you know, when they go down by 100 points or 200 points, um, we, we used to all freak out. Well, now because the the, the Dow is you know well over 30,000, it's statistically not as meaningful um, as it used to be. Uh, so far this year, uh, most of the unmanaged stock market indexes are right around almost double digits or into double digits uh, positive, which is just once again just wonderful. Who who complains about that? Uh, bonds, give or take. This is broad because there's so many different types of bonds, but in general, the bond markets are break even to negative. So um, if you've got a balanced portfolio with stocks and bonds and some cash and stuff like that, of course, you're not going to be double digits most of the time uh, if it's uh, just kind of a, a broad picture here because um, the, the, the bonds have a tendency to um, you know, bring that return down when they're down and uh, they dampen the effects of the negative stocks um, in other years. So it's just kind of give and take. That's why you have a diversified portfolio for those people where it makes sense to have a diversified portfolio, which is pretty much everybody. So um, up on the screen, I want to put something. There is uh, the weight on the right-hand side there, the top right-hand corner. I'm going to zoom in on that just a little bit. You're going to see the weight of the top 10 stocks is almost 30%. So when we look at the S&P 500, which is an unmanaged stock market index, um, the top 10 are 30%. So if they were all went down to zero, uh, the market would go down 30%. They, they have a huge impact on the S&P 500. And that has increased over the last three, four years. I mean, we know this. Some of the, the big technology firms um, have had a huge impact and so they are having even more of an impact today than they, than they did just two, three years ago. Now, uh, same thing with that bottom right-hand corner. I'm going to zoom in on that. That's the top earnings. So, of course, their earnings have just been killing it over the last 12 months. I mean, COVID was very bad for some small companies in particular, very good for some of the big companies. And we're seeing that right there in that, and, uh, in that chart. We're seeing that in the returns as well of the unmanaged stock market indexes. This next chart I'm going to put up on the screen is, um, look at that, way over on the right-hand side. I'm going to circle it in red. Um, I said at the beginning of the video that it's important to keep your eye on what are the major things, the major decisions that you need to make. And one of them, the very best advice that you should have had for yourself or if you listen to me that I gave you was, hey, listen, these things happen, 
stay invested in the market. Stay invested for the long term. You don't let short term decisions, data, emotions determine what you're going to do for the long term. That right there at the very bottom to where it is right now, that's what we have to keep in mind. It's the big picture. Don't let yourself be persuaded by that pundit on TV or your brother-in-law or whoever it might be who's whispering in your ear to say, oh my gosh, it's different this time. Um, I'm going to show in this next graph that three out of four years, historically at least, have been positive. And that's what we have to keep in mind is the, um, the duration that we have for our investments. If you need the money in the short term, you shouldn't have the market in, the money in, there, in, the, um, in the markets anyway. So if it's not the market's fault, it's your improperly placing money in a long-term vehicle, money that you need short term. I'm going to put up on the screen um, number my third chart, and uh, the bottom right-hand corner there. If we are so focused on the declines of the market, then we are not going to have the ups of it. If I am so concerned, as an example, of getting into a car accident that I never get into my car, my life is not as rich. My life is is pretty darn uh, local because I never leave my house, or it takes me, you know, an hour to get from here to uh, the, the grocery store. So it is risk mitigation. It is not risk elimination. And so when we look at the bottom, you can see that when there has been a, a, a decline in the market, uh, it's followed by a huge upswing as well. Now, yes, you're probably saying to yourself. Um, Wait a second, Mike, just the math is if I lose 50%, in order to break even, I have to make 100%. That's, that's true from a math point of view. This still shows that when the market goes down, it has rebounded back to break even and then some and keeps going. And that's what we have to keep in mind. The hard thing at many times in our lives is to do nothing. We, we want to be industrious. We want to, at least we're doing something. Sometimes, the best thing that you can do is to do nothing or to stay with your long-term plan even if you're questioning it on a short-term basis. This next thing I'm going to put up on the screen, you've seen me uh, do this before, uh, show this before, is um, going back all the way to 1980. Okay, so that's 20, 30, 40 years. 40 years of data, three out of four years in general are positive. If you look at the far right-hand side, you're going to see that the last 10 years have had a lot of positive numbers, um, but they've also had the numbers underneath, the ones in red, are the intra-year declines. Those are the years, um, those are the, within the year, a, a, a step backwards, okay? So if it went up 10% and then it went down to 6% for the year, and maybe it ended positive, went, went back up, but that Negative 4% it, from the top to a down, the biggest drawdown is that entry year decline. You can see there for this year, it's, it's been super low single digits. Um, very positive. Yes, there have been some, you know, it wasn't, it went to the high and it went back down and went back up, etc., up and down, seesawing around. But you know what? That's the nature of it. That's the reason why we can't look at things like a mosaic. You can't get too close to your face. You've got to have some perspective. And that is one of the major things that I emphasize all the time is you've got to keep the duration, the, the big picture in mind, and what are the two or three things that are going to make you successful. And one of them, of course, is the big picture in mind. Second is, do you have the right duration, the right time frame for that particular pool of money? So far, this has been a great year. Let's hope it continues. Now we're hitting some of the summer months, July, August, September, October. A lot of times, historically, they're, they're not as attractive, um, but sometimes they're good. So, I mean, there's no absolutes. Um, we don't want to make a short-term decision here based on we don't, we don't need the money in two or three or four months, hopefully. Um, so let's not, let's not necessarily freak out. Uh, I'll continue to have videos throughout this next uh, quarter. But in the meantime, I hope that you're having a wonderful summer. Um, and I hope that you are like me, that you get to uh, I don't know, change venues, uh, change something up in your life so that you see things in an even better way than you did before. Mike Brady, Generosity Wealth Management, 303-747-6455. You have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye-bye.